This is a NAD T7480 receiver which has a bit of an odd issue where it will not turn on or rather give out of standby most of the time when you apply power to it but sometimes it will and it's all really rather confusing and annoying so I have already put a fair amount of time at this uh, at work uh, and uh, I pretty much just gave up that and figured alright I'll give it a shot at home as well uh, so let's see if we can replicate the issue. And now it is in standby, orange LED. And we are seeing the issue where it will just uh, not power on at all. So if we just uh, do this a few times, right? It doesn't want to turn on today, but uh, trust me when I say it, sometimes it will power on and once you get it to power on, it won't power off. And uh, I have pretty much localized the issue to something on this board here, which is, seems to be a kind of main board for everything. It's got some analog input of a tune and a big arm processor on it. And uh, I am suspecting that this processor might be involved in this weird behavior. It doesn't seem to have any odd power supplies missing or anything like that. Indeed, all the power supplies I have tested have checked out just fine, uh, including the standby power supply there, which is acting exactly as it's supposed to. Uh, but sometimes, uh, when you get this thing to power on, uh, it will just refuse to latch the uh, off signal to the standby power supply, so the amplifier will for all intents and purposes be off but uh, the big power supply with this transformer will still be on, the power amplifier will be on and the thing will be drawing 50 watts in standby and then the next time you put, pull out the power cord it won't power on at all so we're going to have to have a bit of a dig on this board and perhaps uh, dig further onto the front panel board in case we've got uh, some kind of standby processy type stuff happening there as well yeah, but I'm figuring uh, we're going to see most progress by trying to localize what's causing the power on signal for the standby power supply which causes this relay to click and the big power supply to turn on uh, because I'm figuring whatever's responsible for generating that power on signal uh, is what's going to be acting up so let's just basically disassemble this entire thing and try to find whatever's causing that signal so the power on signal for the standby power supply is going through this wire which is terminating just in the top corner of a board out of frame and uh, I could just start measuring around tracing it out it's going through a couple of transistors and resistors and things uh, but if we read this label here we will see that uh, the power on signal is actually going through pin 15 of this connector uh, into something in the front panel so since I have already put so much time uh, into looking at this board and not really getting anywhere uh, I'm just going to start by uh, d disassembling the front panel t in order to see uh, if there's any kind of standby processor or something on there uh, a clue which l makes me kind of suspect that is that if I disconnect this cable going to the front panel uh, the standby LED will not turn on so the front panel is where we're going to be looking uh, as a side note I have recently been digging around in an earlier NAD receiver uh, which uh, had a rather similar issue actually and that one had a main standby slash display processor mounted on the front panel board so it's not too far-fetched to think that this thing which is three or four years newer would have a similar design Alright, I'm now taking out the, the front panel board and sadly that is uh, somewhat inconclusive because uh, the other side of the board has no real components on it, it's just got the VFD and uh, a bunch of passives and a couple of diodes. A couple of components have been running hot, uh, for instance uh, that uh, diode there and uh, this resistor here, but they seem to check out fine and I wouldn't expect such an intermittent issue to arise from such a such, uh, a device failure and what I have been able to find out however is that the power on signal is actually uh, an input to this board because it goes from this wire to the base of one of these transistors and from there on it goes to the blue LED on the power switch board and indeed we have the power switch connected up to a pin labeled key 2 which is uh, going out of this uh, cable at pin 8 and 
it just shorts one pin of this cable to ground. So really the pay button is just going straight out of this board doing nothing else and it's connected up uh, uh, with a bunch of other keys as well. So this board is a red herring, it's uh, probably working fine and uh, we're led back to the board uh, in the actual unit itself. All right, so I've removed the board now and a quick probing around shows that the keys go straight into, not even with a resistor in series, this processor. So I found the datasheet for it and I've got the pin out for the correct device here. And I've figured out a few pins we should probably check. So I've labeled all the power supply pins as well as the wake up pin here, uh, which uh, is used to, to put the processor in deep sleep, which may or may not be used, depending on how much power dissipation they accept during standby. So now I'm just gonna remain to this board and put as much stuff back together as is necessary for uh, making this uh, receiver run. And we're gonna be measuring around a bunch of pins on this thing. And if we get to the stage where we've, we've diagnosed that uh, all the pay supplies are there, everything's uh, getting connected through properly to the processor, uh, then I'm pretty much gonna deem this as a processor failure because this has uh, integrated memory, it's uh, running of uh, software which has been programmed into the processor itself. So if uh, that thing's done for not responding to things to which it should respond, uh, then it's unlikely that uh, we've got an issue with anything other than the device itself. All right, we have now reached the stage where I'm going to just give up on this thing because I am reasonably confident that the issue is lying within this processor. So I have checked the pay supplies for all the pins uh, which are uh, marked on the sheet and I have even tried manually manipulating the wake up pin which is indeed used in this thing. But uh, nothing I've managed to do has uh, been able to produce any kind of reliable results with the exception of heating this chip up which uh, will cause the receiver to go into a state where it will uh, turn on every time, but it will uh, usually not turn off, or it will turn on and off fine, but never ever actually do anything. So, sadly, this thing is going to be scrapped. Uh, it does still have a usable everything else in it, so it's assuredly going to be used for spare parts at some stage, if I ever get my hands on another one like this. Well, just for fun, let's just try and pair it up this time and see what it does. So, uh, randomly, the LED will be either blue or amber. Place your bets. Amber, and it will just ref refuse to turn on. Yeah, how about usually how it goes? So, let's uh, try heating the chip up, see if the behavior changes as it did earlier. Alright, the chip is now comfortable, roughly too hot to touch. So, let's see how it behaves. And there we go. It goes into the power on cycle. It might actually be doing something now. No, usually when it does this, it will actually power on proper if you press the power button. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, the VFD is very dim, but you can see we do have text there. But if we try and turn it off, it will actually turn off but uh, the blue LED will never go out and it will continue drawing about 50 watts as it does in idle standby. So that's enough of a certain diagnosis for me to confirm that the ARM processor there is the issue and this thing is no more for this world. So with that out of the way, let's just uh, take it apart a bit further, have a look at the actual power amplifier side of this and uh, then I'm gonna toss it in some heap of scrap somewhere. So all of this pretty much is just gonna come flying apart since I haven't bothered re reassembling it properly at all during testing. And it does feel good to take it apart with no intention of putting it back together. Uh, depending on the outcome of this, of this, I might perhaps modify this receiver to uh, become a, just a normal analog audio amp. That's certainly possible to do with these if you take some time mucking around how to drive the amplifier. You can usually find some place between 
stages where you can just inject a normal line level signal and have a proper output come out to your device. Let's see, it should just pop out with a bit of violence. There we go. Out you come, broken board. And underneath there, we've got the power amplifier. So let's have a closer look. And here's a pretty good look at the entire preamp and power amp assembly. Uh, cute thing is this entire board with all the preamp modules is just bolted in using a pin header so this uh, should in theory just lift out with a minimal amount of force. That's a rather neat solution. In fact let's just have a closer look right now. So we've got a whole bunch of FETs mounted on that. What are they labelled? K210 and K220 or 226 or 228, that's a bit tiny to read. I would say that's K228 with some classic 2SC 1845s and probably 2SC 992s uh, for bipolar transistors. I oh, know they just they've gone with only the uh, 2SC 1845, excellent quality uh, Linux transistors, those are my go-to for replacing in amps in general. And just a whole bunch of diodes and passives on POM that. So that's rather neat design, I didn't mind that at all. Uh, rather minimalist, no adjustments for anything, so, but uh, it likely doesn't need it. Performance probably going to be pretty decent. Uh, they don't have any big uh, driver transistors, as you can tell, uh, because these uh, uh, 2SB1560 and 2SD2390 uh, power transistors are Darlington transistors with uh, a gain of about 5,000 according to the datasheet. And anyway, online, we actually do have some uh, big driver transistors here, and they're labelled uh, 2SC3423 and 2SA1860. haven't checked in the datasheet on those because I didn't know they existed. And well, we actually do have some kind of trimming capability there. If it's going to be BIOS or DC offsets, uh, no one knows without testing, and I'm not going to bother. But uh, assuredly, you can trim something for each of the channels. All in all, I don't mind the look at this power amplifier at all. It would be fun to do a performance test on it, but uh, yeah, without the actual brains of the unit working, that's not going to happen. I am uh, rather disappointed in this unit as I tend to be with NAD products in general because of their generally shoddy component choices. Uh, every single electrolytic capacitor I've found is an Acon brand, generic Chinese crap which does not justify the price point of this device in the slightest and they have used a fan to cool everything, a very low grade no name fan to boot rather than having a properly sized heatsink. And this has been the trend in pretty much every NAD device I've ever worked on, so to be frank, I do not understand the general fanboyism you find regarding NAD products. Well, they are wise, though. I don't really have anything to complain about on this motherboard. At least uh, it's a pretty clean design. We've got uh, the decoupling caps mounted right in the middle, as you'd like to see. Uh, that makes star grounding a lot easier, so performance should really be decent. And we seem to have separate speaker relays for all the channels. I like this little collection of discrete transistors there, uh, making up the uh, analog pre-8 output there. So they really haven't gone for many op amps in this design at all. I've just spotted a couple of them on the main board, and that's about it. Everything else seems to be done using discrete transistors. Now whether or not that's for cost or performance reasons, I'll leave each and every one to speculate, but I would not be surprised if it's for cost reasons exclusively. Something I really do like in this thing though, genuinely, is uh, how well labelled everything is, because pretty much every connector you've got has these nice labels, labelling exactly what's going on where, and that has made troubleshooting this thing so much easier, even though we did end up scrapping it. If one of these was suffering from a more sensible issue which didn't come down to a broken microprocessor, is servicing this should really be easy. Although sadly, the biggest point of service on this would be replacing the caps after a few years of service, uh, as we indeed had to do in the standby power supply in order to get it working at all. So, all in all, this turned out to be a bit of an ugly story. Uh, Rather odd how the two NAD receivers I've worked on the last month uh, have both suffered from 
issues with the standby processor. Thankfully the other one could actually be repaired. But this one, not so much, and hopefully this might serve as a bit of a lesson learned for anyone considering purchasing a NAD unit. Uh, assuredly a nice performance, but the build quality just doesn't live up to the price. It's just a real shame. But either way, I hope you found this at least a bit interesting despite the failure, and I'll have to thank you for watching. Cheerio.